Values. This is very much like those um, container ones. It's yeah, I got it set up like that. I got the X, and then but I just wonder whenever you do the, you just do twenty minus X. Yeah. Do the twenty times the. Two and then this one is the plain twenty. And what was this one? Forty. Forty-five percent. And how much were the other two percent? Uh, Thirty for that one, and then seventy for the other. 70? Yeah. Yep. Because I don't know how that 20 is split up, if it's 1 and 19 so or I did, 10 I didn't and know 10. I didn't know if I needed to multiply 0.45 before I put it in with the X or not. How are you writing yeah. the problem then? Then you multiply each one of these containers. So we're going to take 0 0.30 times X and... 0 0.7 times... Good. Yep. And don't forget the parentheses. Equals 0 0.45 times 20. Now, there's other ways to set those up, but I think this is probably the shortest. I have a clue how to even, where do you I, I, I kind of like that set up. Where do you uh, yeah. the best? Yeah, any kind of, anything that's a, a mixture of two ideas, you know, then you actually have a container, literally a container of so many ounces or milliliters or pounds, and another actual container. And so, like, when you bring those two things out, they're being multiplied. So we're going to add this container and this container into a giant container and everything's being mixed there and when they're mixed they're multiplied. Probably the most visual way to think about it. <laughs> and then the 23 23 is sort of like the angle one that we did. <coughs> I'm not, I can, if you still have problems with it tomorrow, we can finish it, but I want to give you a chance to at least try to work with that. Okay, today then we're going to go through a review. It, it's not perfect, but it's really good. You're going to have between 20 and 25 questions on your exam. Some of them are designed to be quick. I'm just testing one skill and I want to get in and get back out. Some of them are going to take a little bit longer. It's an evenly weighted test, though. If there's 25 questions, there are four points apiece, whether it took you two minutes or two seconds. Okay? A lot of them can be done directly on this calculator. I'm fine with that, but take the time to do it twice in case you accidentally typed something in wrong. Okay? Then you can check that out. Some of them will be multiple choice. The majority of them will be just answer the question. Okay? So, ready? Good. Yep. All right. So... This covers everything except section 15. We'll catch that later when we need it. But for right now, we need to get things moving. So we're going to go with that. Okay. So you'll have some sort of a question with regards to the order of operations. <coughs> Watch out for obvious mistakes like this. This might be one that you do if you had a calculator handy. You might completely type it in on that would be fine. However, do it twice because if this is multiple choice, the most common wrong answer, which would be right here to get a four right out of the chute, that would be an option. Okay, so be careful of those. If you're doing it by hand, P for parentheses means to do the inside. So we want to handle three times two. 
Everybody else just comes straight down. Finishing that parentheses inside, the only thing we have left is subtract. And 6 minus 7 is negative 1. There we go. And then finish the multiplication. <coughs> sometimes people look at that as a negative 5 times negative 1. And sometimes they see subtracting 5 times negative 1. Either way you look at it, you should land at a positive 5, okay, which is 14. Something like that would be a good candidate for multiple choice. Not a guarantee, but it could be. Okay. Then you're going to have things with scientific notation. There's four categories on scientific notation. Unlikely that you would have all four, right? But any of those four going from scientific to standard and standard back to scientific, and then you have big numbers and small numbers. So just a quick review of a couple of those. Um, this would be to write in standard form. And your number is 4.26 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, the numbers won't be ridiculous on those. Just because if you can do it for negative 5, you can do it for negative 15. And we need to keep things moving. So negative exponent means that the number is really small. So watch out for that with the signs. So we need to take 4.26 and make it smaller. We're going to move the decimal point five times. So one, two, three, four, five. So you end up with not five points, but five loops down here. Any empties, fill them in with zeros. Don't forget that leading zero. So we have one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, if you didn't put the, the I'll try and leave that as multiple choice so it's not an issue. I know, but you said you count wrong. Out of four, you don't have the leading zero. Death by decimal. True story. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Your calculator may or may not. It depends on the brand, and even within brands, it depends on the model. You need the leading zero on there. Okay. And those could go the other direction too. Let's see. Had. Uh, 270,000. Let's just go small on that one. Now yeah, let's make it bigger. Instead, let's go 270 million. Okay, so you put your decimal point after the first non zero number. So as I'm coming in, the decimal point's going to go right here between the two and the seven. So my answer is 2.7 times 10. This number is really big, and remember, big means positive. Good. So how many times are we going to move that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. So this will be 10 to the eighth. Again, if you decide to do something like that on your calculator, that's your choice, but make sure that you do it twice. Go back and check your work. The whole idea on a test, you know, they say, oh, go with your first instinct. That's if you're guessing. Okay. If you've got a 50-50 shot at it, then, yeah, your first instinct probably is right. If you, like, know that's not true. But if you actually know how to do the process, you want to go back and check your work because you're looking for transposed numbers or typed it into the calculator wrong. Things that are actually a mistake, not a lack of knowledge. Okay. All right. Then, um, significant digits. <laughs> Want to state or find the number of significant digits? I'm probably going to abbreviate all the rest of this for the notes, but it would be all completely written out on the test. And your number is 0 0.500 inches. Okay, so when it's a number that's less than zero, all of these zeros are important, right? Because that's the same thing as 0.5. On a scale, they would be exactly the same. But for whatever reason, that was important to them to go out to the third decimal point or out to the thousandths. So we have three significant digits. 
another case of the three significant digits would be like what if you had a really large number million sixty thousand okay and oh we only only wanted three this one's gonna have four if I put that bar across one of the significant digits, it means we want to count that too. Zeros in between are still counted, so we have one, two, three, four. So this one's got four significant digits. So if that line, if the line wasn't there, it would just be three. Good. Okay. So watch out for things like that. Um, some of the, and it's going to be mixed up, not necessarily in order from section one through section fifteen, because it's not like you're walking down the street and you're trip over section twelve. Right, it's all just knowledge that you need to have. So not in any particular order. Um, with the polynomials, did a lot of different things with those. For example, there was the add and subtract. Right, and that was where they kind of came in in categories like a 3x squared <coughs> minus 7x plus two. And let's say you're gonna subtract 5x squared plus 6x minus 3. Don't forget that you're subtracting every single term as that goes through. So it's a minus and a minus and a plus. Okay, so if we rewrite that without the parentheses, whoops, you get 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 because really what's in front of, what's really in front of that is a positive 1 so we're just distributing itself through. Then we get a minus 5x squared and a minus 6x, but a plus on the 3. Okay, so that's step one, and that's still your order of operations. P for parentheses meant the inside, but they were all three different. We did the exponents. There's The exponent here is only belonging to the x, so it has no effect. So what we're really handling here is the multiply of the negative one through there so that we can add and subtract these like terms. Then when you go back, put your x squareds together. Three minus five is negative two. Most of you are doing really good with the positive and negative numbers, but you can always double check yourself on the calculator to take a three minus five. Then for x to the first, you've got a minus seven and a minus six is a minus 13 in the x to the first category. And then for the numbers, a positive two and a positive three is a positive five. Watch your things going through on those. Let's see, how weird's going on there? Oh, from the quiz, a lot of people would get this step right and then continue <coughs> to put it together for a negative 15, negative 10. A negative 10 with some sort of X with it. If you couldn't make it any better here when you're adding and subtracting, you can't make it any better here. You know what I'm saying? Like they can only go with the like terms. Okay. Then you also had uh, multiply with the polynomials, like 3x plus 1, one. times x minus 4. I don't know what that was. That was weird. Okay, times x minus four. Okay, and if, if look at my ones cockeyed in there now. If you're multiplying that through, you said if there was just two things, you could go ahead and do the FOIL. And if you think of it like that, I'm gonna write it out for the review for the longhand, which was three x times x and three x times minus four. And then the positive one goes all the way through. I'm gonna go ahead and put the one in front there just for the notes. Okay, and that's your same FOIL. Your three X times your minus four. So three X squared minus 12 X and then plus X minus four. Most of the time, it's, not, it's never a guarantee because something strange can always happen, but most of the time it's your outside inside that can go together. And so you end up with 3x squared minus 11x minus 4. Now for the trick question, why? Hold on. I'm hoping. You are quick. 
I am speedy. <laughs> yeah. Too much coffee today, is that what you're telling uh, yes, me? I'm slow and you're quick. Good. That's it. Like I'll have to bring in the coffee. <laughs> Are you still liking that? Yeah. I can't wait to see what we're doing one more time. Good? Moving on? Okay. What about... There we go. What about this one? X plus 3 quantity squared. Good one for multiple choice. <laughs> Good. I can do it. Good. Yeah, okay, and can these two, can you do that on the, X? oh, you've got a graphing? I got a crazy thing. Is that an inspire? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that can do everything except my dishes. I, I, I haven't mastered it yet. Yeah, it's very crazy. <laughs> so this one is, write it out as two parentheses, and this one we're going to cut right to the chase with the foil, so we're going to get x squared plus 3x. Now we're going to take the 3 through, so plus 3x again, and plus 9. The 6x that we land in the middle is the most common mistake. We'll just see x squared plus 9 without that 6x in the middle. That's huge. On a four-point problem, that's worth two of the points. Don't forget, to, if you just see a big parentheses to a power, and there is a small power, like a 2 or a 3, just write them out. Prevent that mistake from ever happening to begin with. Okay, and then what else do we have with those? The monomial? We good? Okay, on the monomial would be something like uh, 4x squared times 5x cubed y minus 6x plus 2. Again, they're not going to be ridiculously large. Because I can test if you know that skill without going overboard. Okay. This one's mixing it up at least a little bit with the variables. Okay, so we're going to take that all the way through. You can handwrite those separate if you want to, but for the sake of time and energy, I'm just going to go right to the answer on this one. So we're going to get 20. Got two X's here and three there. That's X to the fifth. And a Y. Just comes along for the ride. Minus 24. Don't forget this x has an exponent on it of a 1. Or you can think about it. You have 2 here and 1 there. That's 3. And for the last one, we're only multiplying the number. But the x squared comes along for the ride. So a plus 8x squared. So you know where we're talking about it. It says it right at the top of the test. Show your work whenever possible. I, I don't want you to go crazy with that. Like, oh my gosh, I have to show my work on every question. Yeah, you can factor this. Like the whole thing, could you like pull out where did you pull out and a four? And a four, <laughs> and, a four. Yeah. and you'd be back here. Oh, duh. No, okay. that's what starts to make this crazy, is because one road takes you there and the other road brings you back home and it's just a big loop that keeps going on forever. Yeah, <laughs> so tempting. Exactly. And then once we get heavier into like the what? solving with these, I'll get people to try and solve that for something, but there's nobody, even if there was an equal sign, there's nobody on the other side, so there's nothing to solve for. So. Things like that, I get it that there's no partial, or there, there's no work to show. You know, there can in some cases still be partial credit, because if your only mistake was you took four times two and got six on that eight x squared, you know, let's face it, silly things like that happen. And that's what I'm looking for if there's going to be partial credit. It's like, okay, that was just a bonehead move as opposed to you don't have a clue because you obviously got it right here and you got it right here. So you're just in a hurry or thinking about the next thing and it happens. Or I see every once in a while something crazy happens, like people will transpose just with their handwriting, the number and the exponent, right? Get little things like that. That's obviously not a math error. That's just your handwriting error or, you know, human error. So... Make sure that if you can show your work, you do that, but it's not going to be realistic on every problem. Um, oh, parentheses to a power. Oh, Lord have mercy, that's crazy. Let's do, this is kind of a big one, but let's do a 3x to the 4th y cubed, <coughs> excuse me, um, quantity squared over 6 
y to the h. And directions on something like this would be simplify. Okay, so you're going right, every time you see simplify, even with a solve, you're always thinking about that order of operations over on this side, every single problem. Me. Come on. All right, so P for parentheses always means the inside of the parentheses. Nothing to do there, they're all different. E for exponents, they're talking about this outside exponent. So parentheses to a power is when you multiply. Before we were just doing an add. Okay, so looking at this problem, I want a 3 squared. And for just a second, I'm going to write that as a 3 squared. There's method to my madness on that one. X to the eighth and y to the sixth. Right? The denominator doesn't have an outside exponent, so we're just going to write the numbers as is. So we've got a six and an x and a y to the eighth. The reason I had you write it with just an exponent is eventually we're going to have to deal with negative exponents in there. We didn't do that this semester, did we? Negative exponents. I don't remember writing any so far, but on the test. But anyway, I want you to write the exponent on the number, even if you just turn right around and erase it, because if that digit was negative, it has it, the exponent's going to have an impact on whether your sign ends up positive or negative. Okay. But we just had our three squared is nine. If you're using your calculator, or you feel re like in this case where everything's positive anyway, and you feel really comfortable with it, that's fine if you go right to the nine. But always be thinking about what's the sign of the answer and what's happening with those pieces. Okay, then that takes care of the exponents. Now you're looking for the multiply and divide. In this case, we've got divide going on all over the place, and I want to simplify this fraction, right? So the 9 sixths is going to reduce to 3 halves, all right? I can take a factor of 3 out of each term. When you're looking at the x's, again, if you want to put an exponent on there, you can. Technically, it's top minus bottom. Oh, we did, because we did the top minus bottom. Or, where are there are more x's on top, how many more? Seven. Same thing with the y's. It's technically top minus bottom, then you get a negative and you got to move it. Just say to yourself, where are there more on the bottom? How many more? Yeah. What quicker? And it's the same answer. Okay, so some sort of a simplify with the exponents. And then a solve for x. You'll have a few of these solve for variables, a couple that are just quick, get in and get out, and then a couple that are longer, that are going to take you a little bit more time. This one's sort of middle of the road. And we might end up with a crazy fractional answer or a decimal answer. We'll see what happens here. We're going to get 3 times... 2x minus 6, no, 2x minus 8 is equal to 5 times 4 minus x. <coughs> okay, so when you're looking at this one, order of operations, we're working each side of the equation. So I'm only going to worry about the left for just a second. Distributive property, 6x minus 24. Okay, now that's as good as it can get. Right-hand side, distribute through, and get 20 minus 5x. Again, x number or x and a number so is as good as it can get. Now you're ready to split up teams. It doesn't make any difference if x is on the left or the right. Most of you were moving the x to the left, though, so we're going to go with that idea. So that means I want to move the negative 5 to the left, so we're going to have to add it. Whatever sign that is, during the moving right to left, that's always add and subtract. So we're going to add 5x to both sides. So we're going to get 11x minus 24 equals 20. Add the 24 to the other side. So we get 11x is equal to 44. And then your last step is always to divide out that coefficient. So we're going to divide both sides by 11. 
and get, in this case, we got a whole number. Couldn't have done that if we tried. X is equal to 4. Okay, a couple things about that. Now, on the test, if you wanted to go back and check your work on something like that, it took a while. You can just take the X equals 4, clear back up here, substitute in, and make sure you have twins on the teeter-totter. By the way, we actually have the right answer on both sides. Does everybody feel comfortable with that substitution? Okay. That's one idea. Another thing is, in our particular example, we ended up at a whole number. If you would end up with a fraction, <coughs> I would just leave them in the fraction form. It's less work on your part. Okay, so if I get a number like one and a half, as example, I could leave it as one and a half as a mixed number. I could leave it as three halves, or I could go to the 1.5. The only time I don't want you to go to the decimal is if it doesn't stop. You know what I mean? You get one of those continuing, it fills the whole screen up with the decimals, then I want to see the fraction instead. Right? Otherwise, it doesn't make any difference if it stops. Right? Any questions about those? I have a couple of that. Then, let's see. Some of the questions really are short and sweet. Just get in and get out. Don't let that bother you if it comes in later in the test. Just kind of as a space filler. And by that, I mean just something really short and sweet, like what if you had negative 7 minus negative 2 as your only calculation. Again, I don't care if you do it by hand or with your calculator. I'm just double checking that we're comfortable with the positive and negative numbers. Or if it was a big problem and you didn't do it completely on your calculator, I don't know where the um, meltdown is. If you're doing this by hand, how many of you actually would do this by hand instead of with the calculator? Anybody? One, two, three, four, five, a few. Okay, so instead of subtract, add the opposite. Good. So instead, we're going to look at this as negative 7 plus 12. So my account is $7 in the hole, and I only deposited 2. That was a bad idea because there's still 5 bucks in the hole. But that's an extremely simple one, but I'm just saying that you'll have a few problems out there that will be really tiny like that, or even just... Negative 7 plus 12? Plus 2. Just 2. Oh, did I say 12? Yeah. I Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you did. Uh, I just two. Lost it. It three. Negative seven plus two. So five in the hole. Now, I always say something, especially now that it's on sound, because that'll be super confusing later. Okay. Okay. Well, you put the one, the plus sign, and then oh. it's like 12. Optical illusion, exactly. Oh, also, um, along those, like optical illusions, watch out for problems like this for a simplify. Let's say you have x cubed times x to the fourth times x. Really common <coughs> optical illusion mistake is to forget about that last lonely x, and you'll land at 7 instead of 8, right? So any time, again, that you want to, just put that extra exponent on there so they end at 8 because you have 3 here, 4 there, 1 there. Okay. Again, something like that, there is no work to show because you either know it or you don't. I don't expect you to actually handwrite all those exponents out. That'd be crazy. But just get in and get out. Um, the applications, you'll have a couple of those. I think we'll wait and take any questions on those tomorrow. But they'll be similar to your homework and similar to the types that we did for the review. Okay. Um, basic shape issues. Um, trying to figure out square footage as far as a room or a yard is concerned parameters, figuring out multiples like the, um, we did the angles and you're doing the circuits or something, I don't know what it's called now. So figuring out the ohms going through there for the resistance. It'll be stuff that you're familiar with, you don't have to bring any weird outside information in like you needed a particular formula that you would have never seen before. If that's your only problem is you are having a meltdown in the middle of the test because you can't remember the basic formula. It happens. If that's your only question, feel free to ask. If you get stuck on anything, just come up and ask. The worst that'll say is, but I can't tell you that. Okay? It doesn't hurt to ask. All right. Um, division, we didn't do any of those yet, and the square roots. So, let's do a lot of division. 
division. Let's say you had a 20x to the seventh minus x to the fifth plus 14x. And we're going to divide that by 2x squared. Right. If it's a monomial, one term in the bottom, write those as separate fractions. Yes, it can be done by slashing things out here, but oh my gosh, there's way too many places things can go wrong. So just take one second to actually write those as separate fractions. Once you're really good at it and you're doing that all the time and you write all the time, that's fine. But I'm just saying there's a world of hurt ready to happen. Once you write them as separate fractions, then you can reduce them individually and it's not as bad. So, I'm having some issues with this new bar here. So we're gonna get a 10, more x's on top by five, minus four, more x's on top by three, plus seven, more x is on the bottom by 1. Actual rules of exponents as you're going through that. Again, it's just to simplify. <coughs> Even if it had an equal sign, you don't usually see that, but if it, sometimes you'll see something come out of a test bank, it'll have an equal sign with nothing on the other side. <coughs> the directions are simplify. It means you still have that expression. The only time you can get an answer like x equals 3 is if you have a solve. So you have somebody on both sides of the equation. Kids on both sides of the computer talk. Okay. And then, <coughs> let's see. The solving equations we did with the fractions, some were ratios and proportions. Some were completely with the numbers. For example, what if we had... Um, T is equal to Q over R. And you wanted to solve for R. Remember to you, that means I want an equation that says R equals everybody else. And we don't care if the R is on the right or the left. The idea is that it's all by itself. The biggest problem that you have with this equation right now is R is in the denominator. I don't want to solve for 1 over R. I want to solve for R. So I've got to get him out of the denominator. So we're going to take that equation and multiply both sides by R. Okay, and that's the only point on step one is to get it out of the denominator. So we get RT equals Q. So this problem right now is to currently solve for Q. Q equals, right? But we want R equals. So now that I don't have a fraction, I want R to be all by himself, so if I had extra terms, I would add or subtract those away and then divide out the coefficients. So we divide out the T, and so R equals Q over T. It looks like they just swapped spots if you go back up here, right, which they did switch positions, but be careful of that if you have more than one term, that won't work. They just can't. That one's kind of short and sweet, and those abstract ones will be either a familiar equation or something relatively quick. Right. Then, let's see. Um, that's the one. The, some of the solve for x styles, this one is x over 5 is equal to 3 sevenths. There's something wrong with the board there. Remember, when you're trying to solve for x, it doesn't matter which of the four spots it's sitting in, right? In this case, you could just do a one step. It's being divided by five. I can multiply that over. If the equation was upside down, so I had five over x is equal to seven over three, right? Then it wouldn't be quite as quick. The idea in either case will still work, though. You can use that means and extremes or cross multiply only if it's one fraction equals one fraction. So we get 7x equals 21, or 15. Let's try 15. I lifted those two. And over here, 15 
equals 7x. I've been using the numerator to be the controlling side. It's not that big of a deal, though, because remember, those are just like kids on a teeter-totter. They just got up and switched sides. It's no big deal. Then you divide out the 7. And so here, x equals 15 sevenths. You'll notice on this one, if you go to try th type that in your calculator, it fills the screen up. It's not with the continuing decimal. So I just leave it in either as 15 sevenths or as 2 and 1 seventh. Whatever output that you get is fine. Same thing's going to happen over here. It's just x is on the other side. So I still get x equals 15 sevenths. So we could have, like I said, just multiplied the 5 over there to 15 sevenths right away. So if you have a convenience factor like that, by all means use it, right? It's just if you have a longer step to get to it. Ready then. And then, okay, other than the applications, we're going to have any examples of those, the arch nemesis of division. There will only be one, and it will be designed to be relatively reasonable. So let's take, <laughs> let's take 6x squared minus 8x plus 1 divided by 2x plus 3. Okay, remember whether it comes to you that way or it comes to you as a fraction, either the top one or the first one goes on the inside. So our 6x squared minus 8x plus 1 is being divided by 2x plus 3, right? And it's first term to first term. So even though the expression is 2x plus 3, and I'll use the full thing, I really only am looking at the first term. So 2 goes into 6 three times. x goes into x squared x times. And as long as you have all of your fillers here, and this is just a 1, it always just moves over. 1. If this was an x squared, then I would move over 2. Okay. So anyway, this is going to go in 3x times. Multiply times both of these terms. So we're going to get 6x squared plus 9x. And then it is subtract, subtract. All right, most common mistake is made on that second term. Come on. And so we're going to get 0 and negative 17 x. Bring down your next term, the plus 1. And then your 2x goes into the negative. I'll make sure it doesn't come out as a fraction. What are you going to do? So 2 goes into negative 17 x. Still, it's the same idea. You can write it up as a decimal or you can write it as a fraction. We're just going to do ours as a fraction. So we're going to get a negative 17 halves. Everybody good with the, where the fraction's coming from? If not, it's first term to first term. It's that negative 17x is being divided by the, just the 2x. The x's cancel, and there's your negative 17 halves. And if you want to use 0.5 instead, it won't be a fraction on the test. We'll make sure it folds out as a whole number, but it's not that big a deal either way. If you did it as a decimal instead, so anyway, multiplying back through, we're going to get a negative 17x. And then we need 3 times 17 halves, which is 51 halves. Or the decimal, again, is totally fine. Whatever trips your trigger on that one. And then remember, it is subtract, subtract, change, change. The first term has to disappear or you did something wrong. And so we end up with... Most people probably use a calculator at this point. Remember, you have to have that common denominator. So if I'm at negative 51 halves, I'd want to rethink 1 as 2 halves. Right, so positive 2 and negative 51 is a negative 49 halves. And then again, you write your... <coughs> You can leave it as a quotient and remainder if that's what they ask for. If they just ask for what is the actual division, then you bring your last piece up, which in this case, that negative 49 halves. So minus 49 halves of 
2x plus 3. Now, there's a lot of other issues there, like bringing the 2 into the denominator. And like I said, I'll make sure yours falls out as a whole number anyway, so don't worry about it. We'll just leave it for the review of that. Okay, so the only thing that we didn't cover so far, I think, is this three problem. Otherwise, we've covered every topic. Now, some, again, some will be quick and some will take a lot longer to get through. Oh, the substituting. This is the only other one we didn't do. Like out of section 1.12. This one's a really simplistic, but just so they have one on there for the substitute. Could come in at a long equation. It could be just an x equals. You'll have some sort of a substitution <coughs> question. We'll just do one that's relatively easy, like uh, given that area is equal to length times width. Always fall back on that one because it's super quick, right? It then you know that your area is 80 square inches and you know that your width is, we'll just make it super quick, eight inches, find the length. It's overly simplistic, but the point is not to see if I can trick you on Monday, the point is, do you know how to substitute and then can you solve for that value, right? So whether you choose to solve for L first and then put your numbers in or just go right to the substitution, I would assume most people would put the substitution in first. So we get 80 is equal to length is what we're trying to find and our width is eight, divide out the eight, and again, something like that where it's, you know, totally obvious what the numbers are. If it's, if it's totally obvious to you, that's fine. And you get a 10. Show me the substitution at least. If that's the directions is to substitute, then I want to see the substitution. I want to see that that's what you did. Then how you get from here to here is from beginning to end is up to you. Depending on how many steps there are, you know. We're good? Go with, with that one. I know. Well, it probably will be relative, like perimeter, area, something relatively short and sweet because in some cases I want to know that you can step up and handle the big problem, and in some cases that's all they want to know is you understand what the concept of substitution is, and you can show that in this many steps as well as you could if there was 15 variables out there. But lots. Okay. Any questions? Great. Tomorrow we are starting chapter two. We're all, not always, but quite often going to be into the next chapter before we have the test. Okay, don't let that bother you. It gives you an extra day to make sure you get your homework done, things like that. But we will be starting chapter two tomorrow. Chapter two is geometry. How many of you had geometry in high school, no matter when that was? An actual geometry <laughs> class. You know, was that like, the hardest math class you took ever? Yeah, no, I don't comprehend it. No, I don't. 